All right, so pre-collapse investments and what does one do? Because it's not just about making money, it's about preserving your purchasing power, making sure you don't lose money. In fact, most billionaire investors, downturn millionaires, all of them look at the investments out there through this lens. So first, I want to just welcome over a thousand new subscribers in the last month. If you're not familiar with my kind of view of how I see uh, the economy right now, let me just give you a brief, brief explanation. Um, and basically, it's that every 50 years, roughly, there's a global economic reset. The last one happened after World War I. Um, and basically, what it means is that the world reserve currency uh, switches hands. It's happened from you know, uh, England to the US. Before that, it was England. I took it away from the French, the French from the, the Spaniards, I believe, or I might have those two wrong, but uh, it's, it's in that sequence, if you will. And so now we're on the cusp, I believe. And by on the cusp, I don't mean tomorrow or next week. It could be years. It could be another five to 10 years. But we're definitely witnessing the beginning of it. And I think that's going to be from the dollar as the world reserve currency to a basket of currencies or very well also the Chinese currency having the dominant role as the new world reserve currency. And there'll probably be a battle that will be waged a literal battle, like a World War III battle, because typically these events center around war. So global economic reset, it's underway. And you see that with investors positioning themselves in two assets to protect their wealth, protect their purchasing power. More importantly, I want to break those down to you. So first, like I said, for people um, like George Soros or people like uh, Carlos Slim, the richest man in the world, uh, you know, it's not about making all kinds of crazy money, crazy, I mean, it is. These guys definitely do do that. I mean, they, you know, uh, uh, Soros just recently sold in the fourth quarter of last year uh, a big share of his gold holdings to basically get into currency trading as that's basically his whole deal has been currency trading. He shorted, uh, you know, the British pound sterling. Uh, he's famous for breaking the Bank of England. But I want to get into what this and these different asset classes are. And for all of these people, I think what's key is, again, preserving their purchasing power and not losing money. And I think when we talk about gold, we basically think about the same thing. So the first asset that these guys are in is gold, right? Or the first asset that I should say is used as a means to preserve wealth is gold. That's why governments make fun of gold. That's why the mainstream media calls you a crazy man if you want to invest in gold or says it's a barbaric relic because they want you to be at the whims of government once everything deteriorates. They want you running to government, running to the same people who created the problem. They want you running to them for the solution, right? But if you, because if you own gold, if you had your savings, let's say in gold, yeah, you might have lost a couple hundred bucks between now and maybe last year. But ultimately, if you look at it as preserving your purchasing power, you're still doing light years better than the fiat dollar that's losing roughly 10% of its value a year because of the dollar devaluation policies of Ben Bernanke. So let's look at gold right now. Who's buying gold? Central banks around the world, specifically central banks in emerging markets that are going to suffer the most when the global reset takes place. Or I should say they'll, they'll suffer just as much, probably worse, uh, than other countries in the world when the dollar, when that reset takes place, right? Central banks, the Russian central bank, uh, the Chinese, uh, I mean, so many banks, um, and also a lot of uh, developing countries, like I said, you know, uh, all these countries that, I mean, there's too many to name. Anyways, Soros. Soros has been a big buyer of gold, but like I said, last year, he dumped, end of last year, he dumped his U.S. financial stocks and he sold a big portion of his gold to start trading in the currency trades because there's a tremendous opportunity there. As all these countries rush to devalue, it's kind of like knowing who's going to devalue first and what's going to do, who's going to do what. Now, what most of these people and these people, and I'll get to these people in a second, what they have in common is that they're all part of that globalist, uh, you know, crony capitalist world. You know, I did a video a few weeks ago that talked about who's going to rule the new economy. And I said it's going to be the global elite that we don't play in that pond, or it's going to be the entrepreneur, investor, farmer, those people. And those people will be the ones that also rule the new economy. Well, these people, they, 
the global elite, if you will, you know, today it was, it was, it, it was revealed that the last Fed meeting uh, minutes were actually leaked to lobbyists, you know, members of Congress prior to it coming out to the general public, because of course they need to position themselves before the market reacts. So these people are all part of the crony capitalism, not all of them, but a lot of them are. Uh, and I'll get, break this list down here in a second. So Soros sells gold to, you know, get into currency, but he's also buying gold. He's also talking down gold. He talks, makes fun of gold while he's buying it. He's telling people they should sell it. Kind of the old Goldman Sachs mentality who basically tells people don't invest in gold, but they buy it. Or basically, you know, same thing with treasuries. Now they, they, they sell treasuries, but then they're dumping treasuries. You know, this is how this world works. PIMCO as well. PIMCO was bullish on gold. Uh, late last year, they started talking about how, you know, kind of reducing their gold holdings as well. I think all this is short term. Carlos Slim buying gold mines. He's moving into gold. Uh, Paulson and Company. John Paulson runs one of the biggest hedge funds in the world. Half of his assets are in gold. He's also a big real estate guy, which I'll get into these, into this column here in a second. So gold, historically, for at least 4,000 plus years of recorded human history, has been a way for people to protect their wealth, right? It's why, again, the global elite all own gold because they recognize that probably a lot of their gold comes from three or four generations down the road that's just been passed along, you know? The story that I talked about the other day, the guy that was uh, leaving Italy to go into Switzerland, you know, somebody made the comment, well, he had unmarked bars of gold. Like, that's a bad thing. Like, that gives the state the reason to confiscate it? Of course not. That could have been gold that came from his grandparents or his great-grandparents. And, you know, back then, it wasn't really necessarily marked. So, so who knows? Now, here's the other asset class. The other asset class is real estate. And I want to just get into, because, you know, real estate's not talked about enough, I think, with respect to uh, this kind of uh, libertarian free marketeer crowd, if you will. I'm, I think I'm one of the few people that actually talk about it in the way that I'm going to break it down right now. A lot of people, of course, talk about gold and silver because it is real money. It's not currency. It's real money, real value. It's worth something, not just some government telling you, yes, this is backed by us and, you know, it's worth X amount. Gold, historically, like I said, it's been a value, but real estate has as well. And when we talk about gold and we make all the announcements like, hey, all these billionaires are buying gold. Well, the list of billionaires buying real estate is actually bigger. In fact, if you go to the NoteHouse.us, if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter yet, every week we send out one or two stories. Uh, the story today was about billionaire buying spree of real estate. All of these guys, starting with Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett making huge moves into residential back security, res residential back mortgages. And what, is that, what does that tell me about the real estate market? And then I'm going to get into this over here, which is the pre-collapse investment superhighway, if you will. But Warren Buffett, we know he's, a, he's probably the kingpin of crony capitalism. In fact, many of the investments he's made, and most recently the railroad investments that he's made, um, he has insider information, knows what's going to happen. He buys stuff, and then, you know, a few months down the road, there's some kind of uh, government policy or something happens, just like Soros, and he makes a killing. So the fact that he's buying real estate, to me, leads to my overall theory on all this, where this all ends. A guy by the name of B. Waynes Hughes, one of the total huge billionaire, owns uh, uh, warehouses globally and basically came from absolutely nothing. He owns a company called American Homes for Rent, and he's buying uh, enough single-family homes. Actually, he's number two behind Blackstone Group, who's bought over $2.7 billion in the last year alone. This guy, they're not on that list. But this guy has purchased close to a billion dollars in real estate. Now, Akira Mori, I mean, I know all of you know who he is. I shouldn't even have to get into who he is. But no, really, he's a huge Japanese billionaire buying a billion dollars of real estate in the next year in places like London, New York City, other areas in the States. Carlos Slim, I mentioned him. What's interesting is that some of these guys are also getting into gold as well, uh, like Paulson, uh, like Carlos Slim who recently bought close to $500, uh, $500 million, half a billion dollars of 
distressed real estate, about 400 and close to 500 uh, distressed real estate properties. Russian buyers, I mean, in the last year, they bought about a billion. Um, John Paulson, I already mentioned him, sovereign wealth funds. I mean, the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world is a Norway sovereign wealth fund, and they're buying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate in the U.S. and around the world. In fact, the numbers are pretty staggering. In just the last year, the, the, the global elite, if you will, or the big money that I call, has purchased $5.4 billion worth of real estate. It's estimated that in the next 24 months, they're going to spend another 8 to $10 billion of real estate. That's really a drop in the bucket when you talk about this market having trillions of dollars in toxic debt and having trillions of dollars in toxic properties. But many of these guys work hand in hand with the big banks, and it's a whole suppression of pricing and manipulation, just like you see in the gold market or just like you see in the housing market. Now, last thing, what I call the pre-collapse investments. Welcome to Collapseville. And this is basically just, I'll give you my quick theory. I'll get into this in other videos. But we have, in essence, passed the last exit. This is the EU. This is the US. We're driving on the collapse superhighway. The last exit has been passed. And there's no getting off it. All of these guys know that. And the people that are over here as well. That's why they're buying real estate. That's why they're buying gold. Because when the proverbial SHIT hits the fan, right, and there is a reset of the currency, this is going to be the only way that you're going to be able to preserve your wealth. And in this here, I'll include farmland as well, which is a huge, uh, I'm a huge you know, believer in. Real estate and gold will be the only way, and you know, other precious metals as well, and possibly oil as well, will be the only way people preserve their wealth. Period. End of sentence. This opportunity right now is tremendous. This opportunity right now will be tremendous, but it doesn't cash flow. It just basically sits in your safe. You don't really have anything you can do with it. Here, you have all kinds of things that you can do with it. So, um, you know, and this is what I'm involved in, in the big way. But again, hope all this makes sense to you. Love to hear your feedback. Check out FabianForLiberty.com. I'm Fabian for Liberty. Thanks for watching. I'm out.